Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we doing? That's what the kids want to see. That's what they want to hear. All right, so tonight we are so excited. And first off, let me just go ahead and address the, the wet elephant in the room. You know, um, I, we, we prayed over the weather. Hey, and it cleared, right? Amen to that. Amen to that. Because I know, hey, look, if we can sit out in the rain for a football game or something like that, we can come indoors where it's nice, right, and enjoy some Jesus. Now, I want to set the stage for you as we uh, change the, uh, the backdrop here. We're no longer in Agape Church, Pastor James. No, 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 no. We are in the UGLY. We'll explain what that is. But we specialize here is ugly Christmas sweaters, because it's a thing, right? Show of hands if you have an ugly Christmas sweater. Show of hands if you just have a Christmas sweater that you think is nice, somebody else might think it's ugly. That's everybody. That's everybody, okay? Now, this is what these kiddos have been up against since September, the first weekend of September. These kids have been practicing for this program. We have been praying for you We've been praying for over empty seats. We prayed for a full house, and guess what? It's full. It's a full house. I am so excited. I am so excited for these kids. We have um, kids also, and I, and I want to make a note of this, and I'm going to say it at the end of the service as well. Unfortunately, we had a prime cast member get sick. Get sick. And we had a couple people step up. We had a couple people step up. So, London, we, we are... We are praying for your, your quick recovery. We love you. We are so sorry that you could not be a part of the program tonight. But there are some kids who said, you know what? I'll take it. And they surprised us. Well, you know what? They didn't surprise us because they wanted to do it. Because believe it or not, it's okay to have a little fun loving Jesus. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and ask Miss Lauren to bring our kiddos on stage. We're going to get them set and we'll get ready to go. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. In the city of David, I mean, oh. for unto you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign of, unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And now further ado, Agape Kids proudly presents the Christmas yarn.
but I never knew what y'all do here. Well, to create the ugly sweaters, we do everything from raising the sheep, to shearing the wool, to weaving the yarn, to spinning the cloth. That one's by the sheep that makes you a factory. It's all about authenticity, and of course, taking it way over the top. So that's how you, I mean, we make ugly Christmas sweaters? Well, uh, we dabbled in fruitcake, but that was a disaster. <laughs> See, we got stuck with 10,000 we couldn't sell. And you can't throw them away because they aren't biodegradable. So what did you do with all of them? Well, that cobblestone road you love that leads to the factory? Yes. Those weren't cobblestones. <laughs> everyone, everyone, our founder and president needs no introduction. She's our inspiration and friend. I give you some mint that you need to. <laughs> Barney, when did you know I've devoted my life to this company as my grandparents and my parents? Never once has the Escanesia, Mr. Thrillline, failed to deliver or drop a stitch in one of our world table series Christmas sweaters. So I want to thank you for all the hard work that you've done to get the, our largest order, our largest order ever out the door by Christmas Eve. After that, we'll throw a huge Christmas party. Yay! <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but there's a sheep calling the weaving machine. Oh, again? Yes. You captured all the scene, Tom. First you shear the sheep, then you put the wool in the weaving machine. The sequence is important. Right. Weaving machine first, shear second. No. Oh, right. Shear first. <laughs> Someone help Tom get the poor sheep out of the machine and make sure it's all right. After the liver is sent, the party starts. Okay. <laughs> Sam, this is Carol, our new employee who's here to help us weave these sweaters and get them out the door. Hi, Carol. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming in on Christmas Eve. No problem. Humbug. You call? Carol, this is my assistant, Humbug. Hello, Humbug. Merry Christmas. Humbug, will you tell us the latest sales data? It appears that we're tracking, boss. The final order we have to get out tonight will put us over the top, once again exceeding expectations. Wonderful news, Sam. Why don't I get Carol started, and we'll get this final order out the door. Perfect. Carol, welcome to the team, and welcome to the ugly sweater business. sweater so you know you keep it forever cuz it's you know the weather doesn't matter when it's you know our sales go up 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 each Christmas that's how we help this August for our business everyone we just got a certified letter from fashion magazine the fashion magazine yes don't keep us in suspense what they say <clears throat> For the 10th year in a row, your sweaters have been named the ugliest sweaters in America. <laughs> you should all be so proud. Each one is one of a kind, a hand-stitched masterpiece. The craftsmanship anyone can 
could see, but really what everyone is noticing is how each sweater is splendidly, beautifully, gloriously. Christmas Eve. That's a blizzard boss. It could be a problem. So, you see in the looms and the weaving machines where we make the yarn and knit the cloth. And the sewing machines where we put them all together. What do you think so far? I think the poor sheep were terrified. Mr. Cratchit? Crochet. How do you know if weather is truly ugly or how ugly it is? Good question. We're able to calibrate how ugly a sweater is by comparing it to what is considered to be the ugliest sweater ever. We keep it preserved. It is a masterpiece. Bruno, the ugly sweater, bring it. Bring it. Here, Carol, you'll need to wear these goggles. Yeah. Everyone, avert your eyes. <laughs> it's so Also, some of our dough balls. Are you worried? Well, maybe. I'll be the only thing you see that Mr. I know. Dillon has ever missed a deadline, failed to deliver an order, or dropped a stitch in one of our world famous ugly Christmas sweaters. You won't either. The power's out. No, they were the emergency lights. Never mind, it's back on. No, they were the emergency lights. Their battery's out. Well, we have to make sure if we want to get this order out tonight. Sam, do you think we have a chance of making the deadline? Well, I've got good news and I've got bad news. What's the bad news? Christmas is coming. And the good news?
because Jesus, as a baby, came down the earth to save us. He's the reason for the holidays. He's the reason we celebrate. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas is coming and I can't wait for it. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas is coming and I can't wait because every year we can't believe it's almost time for Christmas Eve. Even though it'll come again, we wish this season would never end. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas is coming and I can't wait. Christmas is coming and I can't wait. I'm here for you, Samantha Ebenezer. I'm here to spin yarns. Spin yarns? Are you here to tell me terrifying tales that are about to come true? What are you talking about? You said spin yarns about my life. No, I'm here to spin wool. I'm Marla Jacobs. I'm a weaver. And yes, I said I came to spin yarns to help you make the rest of your sweater without power. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. I thought I could spread some love and good cheer tonight, too, about the prophecy of the Messiah. What does the prophecy of the Messiah have to do with anything with sweaters? Think about when you get a new design for a sweater. Before you start reading your first design that I had, that's like God's story. He had a plan all along to be the world Savior, and that's what Christmas is all about. Why have you came to tell me this? I did it. I came to these sweaters. You asked me. Anyway, I better get started. <laughs> she vanished. Got apparition. Humbug. Oh, you're awake. Humbug. I've been visited by an apparition. An apple what? You know an appar apparition. She is a vision ship that keeps me. Really? I don't see anybody. Herself, Marlo Jacobs. She spun a wool of prophecy and Christmas. She said that God had a plan all along to send a savior. That's right, mo boss. More than 700 years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah wrote for to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah was predicting the first Christmas, and he even told us who it would be in Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. We've been watching, we've been waiting for the star to flow. He'll come from the tribe of Judah, so they told us long ago. Come, come, Emmanuel. Born a child and a king, born to set your people free. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. I shall come to the old We've been hoping, we've been praying 
for the one to be born with justice and righteousness he will rule forevermore come oh come emmanuel born a child and a king born to set your people free rejoice rejoice emmanuel rejoice rejoice I'm going to get electricity uh, with a kind of key, like Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not how it works. And what's on the string? A key? That's not a key. That's plastic, not metal. So? Carol, it's best if you let Tom do it while I go back to my office to see if I can solve this problem. I'll be right back. Who are you? Samantha Ebenezer. Yes? I'm here for you. I'm here to rescue you from darkness, but first you must open the door. Okay, I'm not falling for this again. What's your name? I'm Fuzzy Wake. I'm with the power company. I'm here to restore light and power to your business. You will come out on a terrible night like this? Of course I come out on nights like this. When you think about it, Christmas is all about bringing light to people in darkness. Even on Christmas Eve? Especially on Christmas Eve. Cri Christmas is all about bringing light to people in darkness. Another visitor. Is this what you came to see? When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, there were shepherds nearby. There was so much light in the sky, they were terrified. For somebody, my life work. That's my favorite part of the Christmas story. I found electricity. It's not what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I there was another visitor here. He left before he could finish his tale about the light the shepherd saw. He said that God brought light to the world when a savior was born. Real light and the shepherd saw it. Well, that was the glory of God then. It shone like the sun in the middle of the night. It was the announcement that God's son had been born on earth. And afterwards, the shepherds came to the manger to worship Jesus, the light of the world. It's Christ.
bring good news of great joy today in the city of David the Savior of the world is born bringing glory to God glory to God glory to God in the highest peace on earth peace on earth peace on earth to mankind in the middle of the night the sky turned bright when the heavenly choir of angels arrive singing glory to God in the highest peace on earth peace on count is up to 3,446. We're making progress. What progress? I mean, we've called in more weaving experts, so. No, thank you. I just had a cup. Hey, Sam, are you hungry? Do you want anything? Peace on earth. Good will to men. Yeah, are you okay, Sam? Maybe you need to relax. I knew it, I knew it, a third visitor. That's how the story goes. What What story? A Christmas carol. What? What do you mean? What? You said a Christmas carol. No, not carol, never mind. What's the purpose of this visit? Christmas presents. There is no ghost of Christmas present. No, I'm here to deliver Christmas presents. My name is Anazon. I'm a deliverer. So do you, <laughs> so is there hope for me, oh deliverer? Is it? Nope, maybe tomorrow. Shipping is a little delayed due to the storm and, of course, supply chain issues. <laughs> no, a message, a story. Is there something prepared for you to tell me? Nope, I need you to sign. I need you to sign saying you received these boxes. Is there no hope for me, oh deliver? No hope. At Christmas, Christmas is all about hope. Are you the deliverer of hope? Nope, just the deliverer of gifts. But Christmas is about gifts, in a way. If you think about it, the first gifts ever given were for Jesus and his family, given by the wise men who traveled across the known world just to honor him. <sighs> Gotta get another couple of boxes. Gifts delivered? Yes, see, boss, looks like a lot of them. No, I want to know that the gifts that were given to Jesus by the wise men.
for the king. Frankincense, a present they leave. on again. Nope, still the emergency lights. Those are the real lights. The power's not working. The lightning did a number number on your wiring. And on Tiny Tom. Either Tom. way, it sorted out your winds and meters are working now, too. Humbug. Right here, boss. Do you think that we can get this order out? We have to be close. We might even be able to finish. I have some good news, boss. As of this moment, we have completed 6,893 ugly sweaters. <laughs> but I have some bad news. Only Kettle Pelt and mostly Hand Sippy. We weren't able to finish the order. Oh. I knew it. I knew it. I was going to be the only explanation to miss the deadline. It was out of our hands, boss. I'm here to pick up the break, big Christmas order to be delivered tonight. I'm sorry to say, we don't, we don't have it. We simply couldn't finish it. Well, it's not a trip wasted. I have a pickup from uh, Tiny Tom right here. This is the last of them. Uh, what is that, Tom? It, it's a gift that I give to my family. Manger sleeves like this one. Hey, okay. you have told Tom you made it? Yes, I do them while I wash the sheep. I give it as gifts to celebrate Christmas. Emmanuel was born, light of the world, the angels told the shepherds, and they worshiped him. The king, wait, the wise men give their gifts to the king. What a great idea, Tom. Thanks. It must be one of my better ideas. <laughs> Our three visitors, Marlo, Fuzzy, and Anna, each told me a piece of the story. They wove, they wove a Christmas yarn of the great news of Jesus' birth. Uh, the good news is the gift itself. Yeah. 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 <laughs> to God's people who waited hundreds of years for the promised Messiah, it must have seemed like God had forgotten his promise. But the Bible says that at the right time, the Lord sent his son to set us free. Well, we might have not made our big deadline, but I said this gift arrived just on time.
angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring to you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. Luke 2, 10-12. feather. Sam, I didn't think you came in there to celebrate after missing the deadline. Humbug. What? <laughs> no, I was just saying humbug. Yes, I'm disappointed that we didn't make our big deadline, but the three visitors showed me what really mattered. What was that, Sam? You know I love the ugly flurry business. It brings a smile on everybody's face at Christmas time. Ugly is beautiful. Visitors show me what really matters. Jesus, the, Messi the Messiah, the light of the world, the deliverer. It's way more than a gag gift. Emmanuel, God is with us. I made a note of it, boss. Don't we feel ugly Christmas love, Disney? Of course we're the ugly Christmas love. Imagine if you have our kind of it, too. But Last week, Tom showed us a, a great idea to spread good joy. Oh, that's oh, a great yeah. idea, Tom. Yeah. Employees of Unity Gifts from Luxurious Yarn, let the party begin. God bless us, everyone. Yeah. Oh, man, how about these agape kids? Killing it up here tonight. Let's give them another round of applause. in the back. You guys Woo! stayed sharp. Take a bow. Another bow, Easton. There you go, buddy. All right. Hey, how about our preschool up here? Woo! Bringing it. Corbin and Sparky all night. And hey, how about our script folks here, people? Come on. Y'all, everybody, let's take a bow. Man, what a great job these guys did. Wait, now, hey, did y'all have a good time tonight? Yeah. Remember what I said, right? It's, so, it's a little fun. It's okay to have some fun, right? Loving Jesus. Yeah, what a great time to do it. Now, we, uh, oh, wait, this was a fun song. Three. Yeah, I think so. Four. Y'all know the motions? Fall down the top. Come on, man, shake your hands. Go into worship of Everybody.
you guys come on down. Good job, good job. Y'all be seated for just a second. Y'all be seated for just a second. You guys can come on off stage. Let's give them another round of applause as they come on off. Great job, Hera and Ava, stepping up, stepping up. This was the second time, guys, Miss Hera has done this program. She did it uh, last night and tonight. So another round of applause just for her, just coming in and stepping up. And Miss Ava with her solo, that was, the, that was the fourth time I think she's done that. So great job. But all of our soloists, you know, this, this, uh, this program... This program was really special. Oh, Julie, I want to ask you to join me up here, and I think we've got a little something there. This is my wife, Julie. Everybody give Miss Julie a round of applause. Aww. I always love it when Pastor Nisi says, you know, it's a privilege that, to do what we do. And, and it really, really, truly feel that it is a privilege to be your children's directors here at Agape Church. And so we just want to know from the bottom of our heart that we just love you. We love your kids. We love the support that you showed. Uh, Josh with ASM, you guys are, are the support that you showed up here as well. You know, um, these kids fed off of your energy tonight. So do not... Neglect that. Don't negate it. Don't think that it's not important. Every time that you guys cheered, they got louder. Now, I was trying to do my part, but they know where mama's at. They know where daddy's at. They know where uncle's at. They know where auntie's at. They know where cousins are at. And so I just want you to know that we just appreciate you so much just showing up and these kids for showing out. Now, we couldn't give, we, this, could, this could not have happened without Miss Lauren Gebauer. Come on up on stage, Miss Lauren. We just have an appreciation for you. And we have a token of our appreciation right here. Round of applause to Miss Lauren. Um, you can go on YouTube because she created a YouTube video of all of these motions. And let me tell you, it, it was great. And then that was one of the key elements was just, they did great with the motions, didn't they? That was awesome. You know, this program had a few things that were a little different. A little thing, did you notice a few things different, Julie? What'd you notice? Number one, I'll answer for you. Number one, motions. All right, the, we did the motions. You guys killed the motions, especially you, Grayson. You got moves, bro. I see it. Yeah, yeah you got that from your dad, didn't you? Uh-huh. <laughs> There's no doubt. Well, there may be some doubt on that, but that's okay. You got it. But, hey, how about sound effects? Now, listen, this is what I told David in the booth back here and Ben and, and Blake. Look, you can't win. You know how you get an Academy Award? Practice. And, guys, these guys did it. I mean, we nailed every. We had a blizzard sound effect. We had a door knocking, even a heavy fruit cake. Finn, great job with that fruit cake. But uh, look, it was uh, just a great opportunity to, uh, to come out and just, uh, you know, this is our Super Bowl, right? I mentioned it like, you know, you come out in the rain for a football game. This is Agape Kids kind of Super Bowl here. And we got another Super Bowl that we do um, in the spring when it warms up, and that's our Agape Kids spiritual gifts test. And so um, it's, just a, it's just a fun day where we just, we just uh, let the kids just dive into what God's got in store for them. Because it's so much more than just motions on stage. It's so much more than just putting on a ridiculous sweater like this and buttoning up this top button that my wife hates. But, you know, we really just dive into what God has for these kids. And so tonight, what did they have? We had a, we had a, um, we had a deliverer of hope, right? We brought light out of the, dar out of the darkness. Yeah? Okay? And so, and then we, and we, uh, we wove a, a Christmas yarn, Right? It was great. What a great message that we have. And so tonight, if you find yourself and, and you're touched by this or you want to learn more about what that means, look, Julie and I are going to be right down here because we want to get a picture with all you kids on stage. And Miss Lauren, is, of course, we want to get a group picture. Okay, so you kiddos don't run out yet. But if you have questions, if you want to know more about what, that's about what that is about, we will be glad to just talk with you. Love on you, pray on you, pray with you, whatever that takes. We just don't want you to leave just having any questions because we want to answer them for you, okay? Because this is the season of hope, amen? All right. Well, Pastor James, I have something for you. <laughs> it smells as bad as it looks, guys. <laughs> I could not have looked. Listen, I'm not even going to tell you whose idea it was, but we made it happen. Thank you, Nisi. Oh, man. That was just beautiful. Just so beautiful. Such a great moment in the history of Agape Kids roasting the pastor. 
I have been known to do that from time to time. I told Pastor James, I said before this started, I said, there's going to be a part in this program where I'm just going to turn to you, and I'm just going to look at you like this. And it happened, didn't it? It sure did. It sure did. Well, listen, that's all we have for you. Kiddos, before you run off, please hop up and walk up on stage. All right. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on up stage. Come on stage, guys. And Miss Lauren, you come up on stage as well. Parents, I want you to get, a, um, get as many pictures as you want with your kids up on stage and all that good stuff. And this is a time to, ta- yeah, this is a time to celebrate. And before we leave, I just want to close this in prayer, take some pictures. And uh, Miss Nisi, thank you for, for setting up out there. Um, we have uh, some drinks and a little treat for the kids um, on their way out. So uh, we, we certainly want to take advantage of that. Um, and again, thank you so much. Who cares if it's raining? Because God's in control, right? Who cares if it's raining? Because God's in control. All right. Kids, let's bow. Let's bow, and I'll dismiss us. Dear God, thank you so much for these kids, dear God. In Jesus' name, I just pray for favor over their lives, dear God. I pray for for health, dear God. I pray for their schooling to just go extraordinarily well, dear God. I pray that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. And dear God, right now, I just pray for the congregation who heard this message, dear God. Just pray in Jesus' name that they would know that the light of the world is at their fingertips and the hope of the world is available to them, and that's through you, Jesus. And we love you and thank you so much, and thank you for reminding us, dear God. doesn't matter what we wear or what we do. We can always have fun serving you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's give another round of applause for our kids, guys.